What's up? It's your boy Rampage Jackson. I'm here with the best co-host, Bear DeGidio. We're here. We got another amazing guest, but Rampage, before we go into this guest, we are having the biggest sale of the year, jackson.com up to 50% off site-wide, the best-selling chain stacks, our best-selling iced out chains, sweat proof, custom class, durable, made to be worn every day, and styles for everybody from bracelets to chains. Make sure you guys go check out jackson.com up to 50% off site-wide right now. And don't forget, if you're looking for all the limited edition clothing, you can go to jacksonclub.com. You can use promo code YT15 for 15% off. And you can catch the shorts that we've been training in, the jackets, the eyewear, everything that the guests have been wearing. We appreciate everybody's support. Before we jump right into this podcast with this amazing guest, we just want to say thank you for everything you guys have been doing. Leave comments and make sure you guys tag us on Instagram if you've been picking up some pieces. By the way, quick little announcement too while we're here because he got one already. Um, Next week, next Thursday, is the release of our first ever collaboration t-shirt with Jackson and Rampage. It's the original Rampage Jackson logo, like that facial image of him like standing in the cage, right? Um, so shout out to our boy who uh, took the photo, Hans. That's the, that's the hardest shirt I ever I ever had. Yeah. That's so right. shout out to Hans for you know giving us the image that we Hans been looking account. for. Yep. Most love, much love, most, most love, love, and uh, th- we were looking for this image forever. And Rampage, like I know who took that. So Hans gave us the image. We built the tee. So the the Rampage Jackson and the Jackson Jewelry tee will be available on Jackson Club next week, uh, Thursday on the release of our show with Teofimo Lopez live. Um, there's only going to be 200 pieces worldwide sold. It's going to be on jacksonclub.com. So if you guys want the Rampage Jackson tea, if you want to show Rampage love for helping me build the biggest MMA podcast in the world, make sure you go show him love and pick up one of his teas. It's on Jackson Club. What's up? It's your boy Rampage Jackson here with Bear. Again, once again, we got very special guests. He's like a legend at coaching. He's a 2022 uh, Coach of the Year and nominee for 2023 uh, Coach of the Year. I think you'll win it again. Yeah, hopefully. Everybody, Eric nigga sick. <laughs> this nigga sick. <laughs> I love it. Did I say your name right? It was close. It was how, close. How, you, how you pronounce it? Just how it's spelled, Nick Sick. Nick sick. But I like I like the I like the flair on it. Um, that's how we started this. Don't yeah. catch me so that, saying that well, shit. What shit? I fucked up. <laughs> I, I didn't know what I didn't know what, I didn't know bro, the energy we were gonna get when he we walked in with the Nganyu cut off. Hey, that, hey that, that's the way it's gotta look though. Bro. When you made that shirt, that's who's supposed to be wearing it, and that's the way it's supposed to be intended is Rampage Jackson rocking when, that fucking. When I thing. when I saw uh Francis Nganu with this shirt, <laughs> I knew I was gonna get I knew I was gonna uh Get some of his shirts. And, I, that, and who that, delivered it? You the man. Oh, my nigga's my sick. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I think a lot of people are still a little concussed from this Nganyu Fury fight, and I'm sure a lot of people want to hear from you about that. But before we start with that, did you know that he was there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, was, we, I saw him the, like two days before the fight. You could see him when he was all dressed up. You knew who he was. <laughs> I, through the guard. Yeah, man. It was tough, though. I just, you know, bubble butt. So you knew right away it was rampage. <laughs> what, was, what was going on with that? Well, I, I, I liked... I liked uh, you know, submerging myself in different cultures and stuff like that. When I go to Japan, I'm too big, so I couldn't submerge myself in in, in their culture. Or in Japan, all I could do is submerge myself into the girls' vaginas. But but over there, in, over there in Saudi Arabia, I can't submerge myself into the girls' vagina, and the guys are bigger, so I can submerge myself into their garments. The culture. The culture. The culture. He was he was he was very uh, he was very culturalized. I was very culturalized. <laughs> what did you think about it? I loved I loved it over yeah. there. I could go. I could I could I could um, set up camp over there. I could have like a, a oh, really? home from home in the winter time though, because yeah, it wasn't I was, that I was hot. Surprised. He came back and had nothing but good things to say. He said he loved the venue, loved the entertainment, loved everything they the had fans going on. Are, the Bro. fans are great. The food is good. Yep, same man. Like I left there blown away. Like they took great care of us oh, from. Okay. From the moment we landed, it was just top notch. Rolled out the red carpet, you know, the luxury apartment we're in, you know, the chauffeurs wherever you need to go. The food was amazing. You know, they flew you business class, which is huge, bro. Like, how many times you traveled to go to fight in Japan, and sometimes you're fighting an economy, or you doing? Oh, not me, though. Not me. I mean, you know, (laughs) even for us as coaches, it's it's tough. You're gonna put us on that twenty hour plane flight, and you're flying economy. But man, like. I'll tell you what, Saudi rolled it out, and I was blown away, and I, I'm looking forward to going back for but, sure. But they they flew the coaches' um, business. Yeah, see, man. that's what's up. See, yeah. when I used to fight in Japan, they they wouldn't fly my coaches' business. They would, my coaches was hating on me too. They was. But you you always was, upgraded them though. 
I always try. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I wasn't making that much money when I first I know, pride. I feel you, Real man. Real talk. I know. They, I feel you. they pride ripped me off. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to keep it 100. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to keep it 100. I love that T-shirt on you. I like this T-shirt too. I'm a big, I, I'm a big fan of Francis. Uh, I've always been a, a big fan of his. I, yeah. I've always liked him. He's a beast. But he's a beast. World's but dangerous man. He remind he remind me of um, uh, uh, Wesley Snipes in the movie. Uh, in that in that movie. Um, Blade. White man can't jump. No, uh, not Blade. that movie. Yeah. Uh, the, the futuristic one he did with Sandra Bullock. Oh, yeah, I remember that. What's the name of that movie? Yeah. Come on, know. Vinny. Come on, Vinny. Uh, <laughs> Vinny, I always, I always forget. He was the bad guy in that. One. It was the same as the bad guy. <laughs> in that. Yeah, he was the bad guy in that. I remember that movie. Remember that movie? was like Sandra Bullock's like coming out party. That's when I had was a like, crush she was on her. Hot, bro. bro, I had such a crush yeah. on Sandra, Sandra Bullock. Yeah. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. congeniality in that movie yeah. though, because it was like her first little like you know Sandra Bullock. Who is this chick? You know, Demolition Man. That's wow. what I said. I said that Demolition wow. Man. Yeah. 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 So how, how the hell does Francis remind you of Wesley Snipes in Demolition Man? Oh, when 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 I first saw him fight, ah. he had that the Demolition yeah, Man haircut. That's right. You're right. So okay. I became right. a fan of him ever since. Yeah. Then. That's yeah. an OG right Smart. here. Oh right. yeah. Understanding an OG right there. The I like haircut. That. Yeah. yeah. You remember the haircut I'm talking about? Oh yeah. One hundred percent. Have you exactly. been his 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 only coach? No. Um. So I first started working with Francis for uh, Junior Dos Santos fight. But he had been he moved to Extreme Couture um, after his Derek Lewis fight. So we had Curtis Blades. He did camp with us there. Um, Kane Velasquez. And then I was in his corner for junior. But, you know, Markel had talked to me about possibly cornering for the Kane Velasquez fight. And the thing for me and Francis was we didn't have like this huge connection yet. And I'm not going to try to force myself onto being somebody's coach. It just needs to make sense. You have to have a fit, a vibe. And we were friends first. And I, I like the fact that like we built this com camaraderie, this continuity. And then over time, the trust began to, you know, fit in. And then we, after the Junior Dos Santos fight, we sat down and we went to dinner, just me and him. And we just started talking about like, yo, bro, like what are the areas that you want to get better? What are the things that are you afraid of? How can we become world champion? What, you know, let's, let's start breaking it down that way. How can I assist you to get there? And, you know, he told me all these things that I thought, you know, we can be, we can be better at, of course, it was his defensive wrestling, his cardio and this, this and that, and just different approaches to the game. If I said to you, this is a deficiency for you, but we're going to work on this deficiency to nauseam, you're probably not going to like it. You're probably not going to enjoy it. It's not going to be fun for you. So I think the approach I started to have was, oh, how can I make it fun for him? Well, let's make it instead of you having a defensive wrestle, let's teach you offensive wrestling. Let's make it a, a, a new tool for you. Let's make it a new attribute to where not only can you knock people out, but we could take people down and we could beat the shit out of them. So now let's make this fun. And by doing so, you're reverse engineering the, the wrestling game. If I can teach you how to offensive wrestle, then you can inherently learn how to defensive wrestle. You think you can make um, training fun for me again? Because that shit bored as hell for me now. I mean, I think, I think you you have to just adapt to the athlete and what they need in that moment. If if what Abraham Maslow said, if the only tool we have is a hammer, then everything looks like a nail, right? I, I have to adapt to the athlete. I have to be able to just have different ways of approaching the, the game to different people and how to, can you connect with them in that regard. Francis is a world-class athlete. He can put anybody to sleep at the moment's touch. You know, I think for us as coaches, you know, you get a lot of credit and you get a lot of blame as coaches. Sometimes the credit you don't deserve because it's the athlete. Sometimes the blame you don't deserve either. I inherited a, a world-class athlete and myself and Dewey Cooper have, have greatly benefited, but we've also helped him in the regards of just, I think, helping him understand the fight game, right? But moreover, Rampage, we trust each other. We trust each other, man. Like when we get on the stool and it's 2-2 two -two going in around five against Cyril Ghan, I'm like, yo, I believe in you, motherfucker. Well, that's real talk. We spend so much time together on the mats. You know, we spent entire COVID with no idea what we're doing, but trained every day. Every day, me and him in a fucking room at Extreme Couture. No one else in sight. So when you get on a stool and I tell you, yo, I believe in you, you know I fucking believe in you because we've had that sweat equity together. Yeah, that was, for me, that was like a, a big test of Francis for me because um, that that guy Sierra Gun, he, he moves he moves like oh, a light heavyweight for real. And I was like, I, I wonder how Francis can do against this guy because yeah. I, I I felt like um, I didn't know if he had wrestling or anything. 
The serial gun. Because I've only seen him fight a couple of times. I haven't been watching it that much. I watch my key people. Yeah. I haven't been watching that guy that much. But I knew he moved very well. The man moves moves amazing. And, you know, he's great out of both stances. And I think, like, you know, you as you know, the evolution of the game has become you have to be fluent out of both stances. But how do you set it up? And moreover, are you fluid out of both stances, but are you defensively fluid and defensively sound out of both stances? It's nice to be able to move to southpaw, but are you getting cracked, yeah. right? Is your defense changed when you move over there? Um, and he does that very, very well. Serial Francis? Oh, both, so, oh. but both now, Francis does too. You know, that's the thing for yeah, us. He did that. He, he did, did that. We, 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 went, we went a lot of southpaw because of, I think, the growth in MMA with Francis we've always tried to add new tools behind the scenes. Now, yeah, he knocked out Junior Dos Santos in 30 seconds. He knocked out Jarzinho in X amount of time. In that time frame, we always were being prepared for Stipe. We knew the end of the road was us to fight Stipe. And if we didn't shore up those things in all those camps, then we only have eight weeks to shore up and be ready for Stipe. No, no, no. I want to have it to where we were working on Stipe he was the end game for the last two years. So what are we doing behind the scenes? Great. We're knocking guys out. That means we don't have to show anything on tape. No one knows what the fuck we're doing behind the scenes, right? So what happened when we fought Stipe? What did everybody say? Oh, this guy can't wrestle. Oh, man. Behind closed doors, we were doing a whole different thing. Francis is in there taking everybody down and beating them up. Anybody that was in the room saw what was going on, right? So when he fought Stipe, he stuffs the shot, turns him, you know, gets his little trip, starts banging on him. Everybody, oh, shit. We've been seeing that for the last year now, you know? Yeah, yeah I, I remember that fight. Stipe mm -hmm. was kind of surprised. Hell yeah. Everybody was. You know, like everybody DC, was DC was about to jump through the roof, yeah, you know? Everybody was surprised yeah. to see him on the floor. Yeah, yeah. It's a big body. I'd actually brought DC in for a, for a practice. And I said, hey, man, I, you know, I don't want to throw any shade on, on Stipe. I know you guys are, let's say, your friends. I know you're your former rivals. But, man, like if I can just pick your brain on some knowledge, you know, you've been in there with this man. If you can come give us a look. And DC is like, yeah, I'm going to come in. So he came in and helped us out, give us a look. I had Randy constantly bringing Randy in. You know, Randy helped us a ton as well. His old ass got in there. Yeah, you got to think, man. Like when Randy fought Tim Sylvia, you know, he was taking that motherfucker down and holding him down. Big, big man, you know. So a lot of the ideologies and a lot of the ways we were stapling the legs and keeping – keeping gone on his back right like when, later on when we fought gone was a lot of the same premises as that randy had taught us you know when he fought bigger guys the gabe gonzaga's of the world you know the tim sylvie's of the world randy's not an overly big man no he's not he's not that big of a guy but that motherfucker can fight and he's strong and he knows what he's doing with his body yeah how you know he knows what he's doing with his body? Well, pause. <laughs> hey, pause. <yo. laughs> what I really want to know is about the um, Tyson Fury fight. How, yeah. did, how did it? How did that even come about? Like a lot of fans probably want to know sure. something behind the scenes. I mean, you know, it was always in in his sight. It was something that Francis had always talked about for years, and it was, I think, it's a testament to putting things out in the universe, right? And and speaking amongst your closest friends. Speaking, speaking that into existence amongst your closest friends who are going to, I guess, put that in motion, put it out in the universe. Like if, if, if Bear came to me and said, yo, bro, I want to do this, I'm going to be your number one fan. I'm going to I'm going to help push for that, you know, and do it the best we can. And over time, it started to become closer and closer to, man, man, this might actually happen, you know? And then when he beat Cyril gone, we went to a dinner with Dana, Hunter, myself, and Francis, just the four of us. And Francis said point blank to Danny, he's like, I, I want to box, but I want to box under the Zufa banner. I want to box for you guys. I want us to make money together. You guys already did it once with, with Connor and Floyd. You guys made a ton of money and everybody was happy in the long run. And Dana had his points on why he didn't feel it would work because of Tyson Fury still being with WBO and, you know, all these belts and everything where it worked better for Floyd because he essentially was retired. So Dana had his business side of things and his points that he brought up. And, you know, Francis, I wouldn't say he didn't, didn't believe it, but he just felt like it still could have been something that could have gotten done. Unfortunately, over time, you know, the, the relationship with UFC and Francis didn't work out. And we always wanted one of the big three. It was Tyson, Joshua, or Wilder. That was kind of in insights, Tyson being 1A. And, you know, credit to Markel and, and Francis and the team, Man, just I got a call from Markel one day. He's like, bro, you ain't gonna fucking believe it. Like they called our name. Like Tyson, Tyson Fury wants that fight. 
and you know credit to Tyson Fury man he's the one that really blessed us with the opportunity and man like we just we just did the best thing and put our best foot forward and went out and fought this fucker bro I was in the UK training um visiting uh with coach Bobby yeah I was just visiting out there with him and um and um he knows some people that knows that circle because you know he my coach is from Manchester that's where they from mm -hmm. and I heard that that uh Tyson was thinking about boxing uh, uh MMA guy I heard he called out a couple of people this back when he was talking about John Jones so I was like oh okay you want to fight John Jones I, I put it I put uh word in one of my homeboys ears say look if if uh you know Tyson Fury wanted to fight John Jones I come, I come and train with him. You know, I, I, I wanted to get I just when I was starting to get back in shape. Mm -hmm. I wanted to do some stuff. I wanted to, you know, get into some boxing. So I, so I told him, uh, but I never heard anything back. So I knew that something was coming up. But yeah. I thought it was with John Jones. Then when I heard it was fr with Francis, I, 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 I shut up. I didn't want to train with him. <laughs> yeah, I heard it was with yeah, Francis. Like, one of one of our own. Yeah, 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 yeah. one of our own. I never guess John Jones. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, John Jones, he, like, he hurt my knee. Yeah. You know, he poked me in the eye. He, you know, he, <laughs> so I was like, okay, I, I help, I help a, a, a boxer guy versus, you know, I, I do something like that. But yeah. but, but MMA, is, it's, it's yeah. like, it's like, it's our brotherhood. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I did find it interesting that it was a hard no for us when Francis was looking to fight Tyson Fury. And then Dana kind of changed his tune when it was possibly John Jones, you know? Right. And that was kind of like, oh man, like we wanted that opportunity to be a part of Zufa Boxing and make it work for all parties involved. And unfortunately it didn't work out, man. And you know, Dana's smart, he's a smart businessman. You know, Hunter's great at his job too. You know, no no disrespect, but we had to go out and, and do our thing and, and and make the bag. And you know, Francis went out and did that. Right, and, and Dana fumbled the bag, man. Yeah. He, Dana, do you think that, he fumbled the bag? Yeah, yeah, Dana fumbled the bag big time because, uh, I, I got nothing against Dana. At yeah. the end of the day, I got to respect Dana for being a businessman, but Dana took a lot of food out of my mouth too with a couple of things, with the Reebok deal, with mm. with, with, mm -hmm. with my pay-per-view, with my pay-per-view deal after, after I fought Man. Chuck. I'm keeping it 100. He, he took a lot of money out of my mouth, but you know what I'm saying? It, at the end of the day, how salty can I get? It's, it's, it's business, right? Yeah. And and, and with no, no disrespect, Dana, you fumbled the bag. Yeah. Because if... I asked Dana to, to to box years ago, back when I was champion, because I won. Mm -hmm. But it was nobody for me to box back then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I see why Francis want want to do it. You know what I'm saying? Because boxing don't don't hurt as much on the body, and you can and they uh, the top boxers they earning a lot of money. Why yeah. not? Why not eat with the UFC? He's on it. We, we're MMA fighters. We okay with being on the contract with one promotion, right? For sure. And so my, why not eat with the UFC? The UFC eat. Uh, Francis would have ate. And 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 Tyson would have made a whole a whole mm. you know shit ton of money because Tyson boxing you know they they used to making yeah the bag that was one of the biggest fights of the year absolutely do you think after that knockdown in round three you guys were gonna get a KO were you I was watching you in the corner with your Jackson chain on wild yeah. and out. was it over did you think it was gonna be over no not not at all and I think that we we as a corner have to stay calm and exude you know what the what the fight presents right. I think if we're overzealous and, and screaming and, and getting too carried away, um, if you put you, you put your fighter in a, in a in a detriment, in my opinion, right? I think that until that fight's over, the same thing happened with Sean when Sean dropped Izzy. I didn't even budge. I didn't budge. At that moment, there's nothing for me to coach. I'm not screaming and yelling. If the fight's over, then I'll celebrate. But I knew there was pertinent information I had to tell Sean in between rounds. And if I, my emotions got a hold of me, then I might forget what I need to tell Sean in between that, in between that wow. round. You know, so in that same moment, yes, were we excited? Of course. You know, and then he was like, okay, calm down because he's going to feed off that same emotion if I'm too high or if I'm too low, whatever it may be. And we need to get this information across to him because – in, in my mind and Dewey's mind, we were spot on. Dewey and I, man, we, we're boys. Like, we've been together for 10 years and in, in, in dealing, like, cornering together. And we were on the same page. A, calm down. Tyson's going to come out, and he's going to be pissed off. And he's going to try to get that round back. He's going to try to come after your ass in, that, in round four. And I have to go back and watch the fight. I don't even remember if he really came back, back after him. But all the while, we didn't want our guy to go in for some kill shot get overzealous because that's not what we wanted the entire camp was falling over our front foot, yeah. throwing shit, you know, where he just pull counters and land something on us, get back to what we were doing, jab the head, jab the body, get back to what was working and how it got set up and then get back to our game, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and, and he did, and he did great, man. I, I couldn't be more proud of our guy and, and, and what he, what he said did and went in there and did with it versus that guy. That was, that was actually really smart. I didn't think about that. You know I me, mean? all I wanted was for him to, 
finish the fight. But um, you know, as a fan out there mm-hmm. watching, it, you you saw Tyson get knocked out by Wilder. Yeah. Then mm-hmm. come up like the Undertaker. So Fucking I was so one hammer. of the craziest knockouts to coming back on your feet that I've ever seen is that Tyson Wilder knockout where. Fury goes down and just pops up out of nowhere. Pops back up, man. And, and and you know that, like, now, anecdotally, when you break down a fighter, you talk about a fighter, you're like, yo, man, like, this dude's never out. Like, you've seen this guy get slept, get dropped, pop right back up, and then go on to win the fight or turn it into a draw, right. you know? And so that that's yeah. information that you have to understand as a coaching staff and as a fighter. It's like, don't get too high on that because what we've seen this dude come back from the dead and you have to get right back to your game plan and but, be ready to execute. But it. you guys have to, y'all had to have known that if the if he didn't finish the fight, that was going to give it to him though. Yeah. Um, you know, we had a moment there right after the fight where Francis looked at me and he's like, you know, I don't think they're going to give it to me. And, and I, I, under, I understood the politics. I was, I was talking to coach about that too. The politics behind it, you know, you, you can't already have a fight booked against Fury and Usyk and then, just essentially sabotage yeah. that next fight. I'll tell you what, though. I don't think I've ever seen Francis as mad as he was when they booked that fight. You know, and I don't like putting Francis's, you know, his, 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 his information out there. You know, that's my brother, but I know that he was he was not happy. And I'll, I'll tell you else who knew that he wasn't happy was the sparring partner we had that day when they announced that fight because Francis put a fucking whooping on everybody. He was pissed, bro, and he thought it was the most disrespectful thing. It he was. Do. I mean, bro. that's got to be. Yeah. The most disrespectful thing you could do to a fighter. I mean, at least respect him as a fighter for that event that you're putting on. But to to book a title fight basically against yeah. the second best heavyweight champion in the world besides Fury. Yeah. And like act as if Fury's like, you know, gonna fight a bum. Like, dude, you're fighting Francis Ngannou. Yeah. Baddest man on the planet. He had a pretty gangster tweet though. He's like, yo, how are you gonna box in December when you're gonna be on medical suspension? <laughs> right? And sure as Who shit. Tweeted that? Francis did. He was pissed. What, the, that day, the day they did. announced Fran- it? I didn't. Yeah, the day they announced it, Francis tweeted. He goes, How are you going to box at a title fight in December when you're on suspension? Like, how long is a medical suspension? Oh like, he, something along those yeah. lines. How'd you guys find out? Oh, we all found out the same day. We saw that. We saw it. You know, and credit to Tyson Fury. He's like, Oh, I didn't want this to be announced like that. Like, oh, he, he told you that? He came out with it and said, like he said on Ariel's show, he's like, Bro, I didn't, I didn't want it to be like that. It shouldn't have been like that. Now, and, and Tyson even said that was disrespectful. You know, but it wasn't, you know, it wasn't on him. It is what it is, his business, but it was fucking bulletin board material. I'll tell you that because because it fired everybody up. Is, you know? is, is, it is, is Tyson, is he a disrespectful guy? No, or, or he, I didn't think so at all. I thought he was super cool. Like, you know, I, it was the first time for me to go back and watch him wrap hands. Like, I've never been accustomed to that. Like, yo, E, you need to go back there and watch Tyson Fury get his hands yeah, wrapped. Yeah, we don't do that shit. We don't do that shit. You like, guys whatever. Do that? No, like, in no, a boxing no. where you get to send a trainer. Yeah, the no, yeah. So, the, you know, the MMA, yeah. like, motherfucker, putting nickels in your fucking gloves. We didn't care. You know, it is yeah. what it is. So, you know why, do you know why we don't do it in MMA? Why? Because we, we're, we're, we're both, both fighters are, we're under the same promoter. And uh, they have they have their commission back there checking all this stuff. But in boxing, sometimes it'd be different promoters, you know, and they, you know, since people try and get ahead. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, it was cool, man. Like I was back there with Sugar Hill. It was it was a, it was a, like you know what it's like in a locker room. It was yeah. cool, man. It was a cool vibe. Music was was blaring. Um, Who's locker room? Tyson's. So I went in Tyson's to watch him wrap his hands. You know, had Sugar Hill back there. Yeah, they, they had the rappers back. The there. Rapper. The rapper, the, sh- the rapper, the rapper. Hit. no, uh, his, the, coach. his coach, <laughs> his coach, his coach, Sugar Hill. You know the boxing coach? Hell no, Emmanuel Stewart's son. Yeah, no, I don't know about that. It's like yeah. it's like everybody thinks John Fury's his like coach, his dad, nah. but he has like one of the greatest boxing coaches. He was he was cool, bro. Oh, like see, he was cool. Like you know how you feel, you just feel the dude's energy. Like oh, this guy, calm, cool, collect, wrapping hands, and just. No, he was he was very professional. And Respectful. Then, I thought you yeah, talking, yeah. I thought you were talking about the Sugar Hill gang. No, no, no. Because that's no. Oh, okay. No. The hip hop. Yeah, 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 no. No, 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 in Saudi Arabia, no. they ain't there. Oh, okay. no, they ain't there. Everybody else was there. They were there, but I true. don't think they flew them out. They, okay. weren't, on, they weren't on the list. They were on the manifest for that one. Yeah. Who, did we, you, who did you meet? Did you meet everybody? Not really, man. You know who, bro? I was blown away was uh, Lennox Lewis. Uh, yeah, bro. I was because I've always been a huge fan of Lennox Lewis, and then um, Adrian, his manager, came over. And in my opinion, Lennox is the goat in the yeah. heavyweight division. I think yeah. he's the most pure technical heavyweight boxer to ever do it. How you think I'd do against him? I think you would probably do. <laughs> 
He couldn't even get it. He couldn't even get it out. I would be yelling, rampage, low kick, low kick. Oh, uh, Coach Bobby. Give me that signal, single leg. Coach Bobby said, why do you ask that question? We got rampages. Coach from the UK out here because he's doing fight camp. Yeah. He's about to fight Shannon Briggs. I know. And I know. and before he even fight Shannon Briggs, now he wants to fight Lennox. Well, yeah. Well, you was you was at that. You was at that. Yeah. Uh, what was that like? That meeting when we first met the 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 king, the uh, Turkey, Tur- Turk. Yeah. I wasn't there for that, but uh, it, I, um, Israel Arsani came over and and he's like, "Yo, bro, is, is Rampage and Shannon Briggs cool? Because them motherfuckers, I thought we we're about to fight at the lunch." Wait, uh, wait, <laughs> wait, tell me this. He don't like to tell me these details. Oh, uh, I mean, this is this is a te- I'm playing the telephone game now because Let's this is it. this is Israel's story. But Izzy was like filming. He was like, "Man, he just kept filming Rampage. He thought he was about to scrap at the at the luncheon." So, so, so this what is are you doing in Saturday. Arabia, so this now? is the thing. I'm be I'm I'm keep it 100 right here on our on our our safe place. Yeah. Shannon and I we do get along, but sometimes he just annoys the fuck out of me because he is annoying as fuck, and he won't stop saying "Let's go, champ." And and then he would then every now and then he'll say something that's he'll say something that's very disrespectful to me every now and then. What? I don't know. He just he just says like he'll just say something that get up under my skin, and then sometimes we get we do be getting the argument, but. We we like cool because I, I think he's funny, right? Because I honestly I do like him. Yeah. But I like to knock him out too. Yeah. Hey, it's like a, it's like a brother, you know. Every once in a while, you yeah. want to yeah. fucking you the sock older your brother. brother. He's the older he older. That, that <laughs> mother old as hell. That mother, but then this is what happened at that at that at that um that it was like a lunch thing before we ate lunch. I think uh, we met a Turk. His name is mm-hmm. Turkey. Mm-hmm. His name is Turkey. Yeah. Turk Turk Azul. Al Al Sheik or something like that. Turk Al Sheik, and yeah. he's a nice guy. Right? Yeah, super nice guy. Super nice guy. So he he said something about he want legends to start fighting each other. Mm-hmm. But before that, Menace Lewis came over to me and he kind of like sized me up. He grabbed me and touched me. And I can't remember exactly what he said. He said, uh he said, Hey, I heard you want to fight Shannon. Uh I'll come tra- I'll train you and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. And I looked at him, he was like, he like size the same thing Randy Couture does before you oh, fight yeah. before yeah, you yeah. fight people. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm grab about. grab a hold of your arm, yeah, yeah, yeah. tries to arm drag you. Randy Randy Couture, he sized you up before if he yeah. wanna fight you. How? I know I know better. Come on. Wait, how? No, no, no. You can't just say what, that. Well, we in the middle of something else. <laughs> okay, we gotta go back to that though. Keep going. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh he he did that and then um sure enough, maybe like um less than five minutes later, Turk uh, Turk said something about Lennon's Lewis fight. He want to fight Lennon's Lewis. So I, like, I looked around. Nobody raised their hand. My coach was next to me. I, I raised oh, my hand. I said, I'll fight Lennon's Lewis after I kick Shannon's ass. Yeah. Then Lennon's like, uh, Lennon's like, I'm down. Let's go. So that's the, so that's the thing. Like, what are you it, doing in Saudi Arabia, dog? Man, I'm <laughs> like starting fights, chaos. bro. You got chaos. Israel Adesanya telling all the trainers and coaches that you're trying to fight in the parking lot or what? <laughs> man, I would, I would, I would fight Shannon Briggs in a, anywhere not, in Saudi not, Arabia. Not in like a street fight. Yeah. Hell yeah. I would, I would, you didn't I would see hurt. what he said he would do to you? You didn't see what he said he would uh, do to you? See I seen you guys on the pod he said, he said he would have a nice little overhand right and crack Rampage's skull down the top. Damn, he said that? Can you believe that? He, he, hey, he, respect. He, he thinks he can do more than what... But I'm going to tell you one thing. I give, him, I give him this, though. I was messing with him at the um, when we we went to go shot our own little thing at the um, Dave and Buster's. Yeah, it was And awesome. I shot in on him and it just... just yeah? See, How'd it go? Double leg. He stuffed my double leg. No. No, don't say that. Get no, out. He did, he no, did. we got to edit that out. No, no, no. no, no. I'll keep it real. I'll keep it real. No, I can't. I can't. He hit no, it's, on, it's on my Instagram right now. Yeah, I posted you go, it. You're going to yeah. hurt my heart. Bro, no, no, no. He stuffed my over, my double leg. But it, I wasn't going 100%. I didn't keep my feet yeah, moving. Yeah, yeah, I still could I still could have turned the Back corner. Back all low. And I could have I could have I could have turned the corner and took him down. <laughs> but I just want to see. I just want yeah, to see. Yeah, see what he had. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think yeah. I think I think I think Shannon, this is what I think about Shannon. I think Shannon and I should do a boxing match. And then fight MMA. And then fight MMA. Yeah. Because I, I think the fans really want to see it. Hell yeah. You know, I mean, like, I, no, who was one of the biggest crossovers when, when uh, James Tony fought Randy? You know, credit to him, man. James Tony went in there and fought Randy, got taken down. But I wish Randy wouldn't did that to him, though. Yeah, bro, he's, he's not crazy. <laughs> I know, but, <laughs> yeah, but I think, I, I honestly, Randy did a good job. He he represented the sport of MMA. But I, I wish that Dana White would have gave... Um, gave him somebody like Kimbo Slice or yeah. or Houston Alexander. Or somebody, yeah, yeah, you know yeah. What I'm saying? yeah. Somebody's for going, sure. Yeah, that's you know, smart. Yeah, that's smart. It would have been a more yeah. exciting. You know, yeah. Randy, take, you know, good for Randy. Yeah, but I but, got respect for Randy. Yeah, I mean, it was it was it was what it had to be done in that fight. Yeah. You know, for sure. Before before I let this slip out of my mind, I want to know what you're talking about. You saying Randy size you up before a fight? You saying he doing something different before? A fight? Randy, okay, I keep it real. Randy, Randy Couture is a legend. Randy Couture is a legend, but this he, is Randy Couture number two right here. <laughs> no, I don't know about that, man. I, Randy, I'm I'm his I'm his understudy, but yeah, he's the legend. I don't think Randy will ever admit this because 
I just don't think he would. But I think I think Randy has a mind the way he he thinks kind of like a samurai. Yeah. I, I, okay. 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 100%. So he's grim. And one the and one the most one the most uh, successful samurais before he would challenge somebody he would he would go and he would go and size them up. Mm. And I remember back in the day that before Randy Couture fought Tito Ortiz, he was training with him, and you know, saying I know that. And yeah. then and then then years go by, and Randy Couture wanted to train with me. I was like. This motherfucker want to fight me. Trying to get in there. Yeah. He See wanted to fight me. And I was like, uh, no, nah, I don't want to train, Randy. I don't want to train. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we end up not fighting. Man, he's he's the by far the the ultimate competitor. You know, he, like he just he, wants to win. Man, like he he's a guy like where, you know, I'm I think Rampage, when he fights somebody, he's trying to harm you, right? He wants to hurt you. Where he's a fight, he's a fighter by nature. I think Randy's a, a competitor by nature. He doesn't doesn't want to see you not be able to go home to your kids you know he wants to just beat you at whatever this whatever you guys are competing at and then he's cool you know and that that's just always been him but man like in the room i've never seen a guy line up harder rounds in my life it was you know vandalay forrest griffin vitor you know the who's who of guys round after round after round and just randy wanted to compete man wait is he wrestling with them or sparring no when he was sparring back when he was still fighting oh uh, mma yeah when he was still fighting that man that 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 room back in the in the heyday was you know the who's who the jay harons and mike piles you know just tough to phil baroni just tough dude, that's why man. you guys are so good i never i never really went against people like that and phil baroni crazy man. you said that that's that's one of the reasons why i learned not not to because I was there when uh, Phil Barone and hurt Tito Ortiz, hurt his knee. Tito had to get surgery. Yeah. And I asked Phil, I'm like, I'm like, Phil, why, why, why you do that? Why, why you wouldn't just let the leg go? He was like, I wasn't gonna let that takedown go. Yeah. It's sparring and training. And yeah. I said, I said, now nah, Tito got to get. Um, he's out for a year. He, he's out, and he got to get surgery. He said, so he should have let me take him down. Isn't it crazy how like you know the 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 mind the the I guess the approach has changed immensely because like you know. How many rounds do you think guys have lost in in actual fight time because of what the rounds they left in the, in the room training? Guys getting dropped, guys getting knocked out, guys getting concussed. You know, all because of essentially an, an ego. It's an ego. It's an ego thing. You know, whereas now I think the, the game has changed in the regards of we understand that you're not going to get paid in the training room. Mm. No one's making any money now in the training room. We have so to save each other. Yeah, yeah, I feel like it has. You know. Um, we still have the green lights. You know, there's sometimes guys come in and they need to get a fucking ass whooping on them. But in the most part, I think that, you know, it's, it's even then it's, we say, we could call it the gentleman's KO. It's like just body shot him. I don't want this dude not to be able to drive home. You know, yeah, bro, I'm telling you, it's been, it's been times when I went back home to Memphis and train, you, you know, Jeff Mullen. Oh yeah. 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 He's my first coach ever. Yeah. From, from yeah. Memphis. Yeah. He's our, he's our athletic uh, yeah. commission guy now. Yeah. 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 He's the man. He moved all yeah. the way up and he, he can he can uh, he can tell you the story better than I can. I, I went back home, I had already fought in the UFC by this time. I'm sure maybe I was just fighting in pride, but you know my memory is it's kind of foggy where I where I was in my career. But I went back home and I never liked to spar with people I didn't know. And mm. I'm training. I'm back home visiting my family. And Jeff wanted me to spar this guy. I'm like Jeff, I don't want to spar him. I don't know him. Mm. And he was like, No, just just spar. And I spar the guy, and the guy tries to knock me out. Mm. The guy is straight up trying to knock me out, and I lose my temper. That's when I lose my temper in sparring. When I, when people, mm-hmm. I call it take liberties. That's what I call. It. I was like, this motherfucker tra- taking liberties, trying to trying to knock me out, and I felt bad. I didn't want to knock him out, so I hit him with a crazy body shot and dropped him. And then then he got mad at me. I think I broke his ribs. Yeah, to come find out. But he got but he got mad at me, and and he started and, it. And I'm like, yeah, you started it. Yeah. And I and I was like, uh, he talking shit to me, man. You a piece of shit. Blah 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 blah. I talk shit. I was like, whoa, you were trying to knock me out. He said, yeah, but you a professional fighter. You can take it. Wow. Mm. And that's why I always love sparring Ray Sefo because Ray would match your energy, mm. right? And for me, like I wasn't trying to be this pro fighter, or world class. I just want to learn. But Ray, although he was probably the with the most accolades in the gym, with oh, the best yeah. striker in the gym, I never felt more safe. But he'll he'll let you know, like if you do something dumb or you fuck up, Ray's gonna make you pay for it. But Ray was the probably the best guy to ever spar in the gym because he can control all of his weapons and he knew how to make you pay if you if you didn't. But he's the one of the fucking six time world champ K one yeah, kickboxer. Yeah. Ray Ray's yeah, the man. on the PFL now. 
Yeah, Ray's the president of PFL. Ray still spars every Tuesday and Thursday. No way. You know, Ray's probably, what, is he 88 years old? He's an old motherfucker. No, now. he's 90. Nah, 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 nah. No, no, he's an old man. Yeah, he's I was old. old, bro. bro I but he get, can still kick. Oh, bro, Ray, Ray is Have you seen him fast, kick? Oh, yeah. Man. He just posted yeah. a reel the other day. I was watching it. His inside kick, I was like, oh, dude, that would break someone's shin. That man, know how to block I, I'm, I'm, you know, there, there's there's, there's a handful of guys that like, you know, and I want to I want to talk to you about Mike Pyle as well, because you fought Mike, you know. Yeah, it was my first fight. Yeah, Mike Mike was one of my first coaches. But like, without Ray Sefo. You know, I'm not here today. Really? Like, oh man, real talk. Like, so Ray Ray hired me to be his head coach when he fought um, in World Series of Fighting. He fought short notice on his own promotion, and um, you know, at that moment, I was just like, man, I was just grappling. Like, I didn't know a whole lot of anything. I still feel like I don't know a whole lot of anything. But Ray was the guy that really gave me the opportunity, the first opportunity. But what I noticed was that was the first time Dewey and I ever worked a camp together, mm. and I didn't really know how to hold pads. I didn't know at all, really, you know, and I said to Ray after Ray fought, I was like, hey, coach, like, I want to learn how to hold pads. And do you think, you know, you, you, you give me some time. I was so nervous to even ask. Right. And it, like, sometimes you just got to fucking ask. You got to knock on the door. And a guy like Ray Seffo goes every Tuesday and Thursday, be here at 10 a.m. You're going to hold pads for me every morning, Tuesday and Thursday. Bro, it was like two years, bro. Me and just me and Ray learning how to hold pads for Ray Seffo, six time world champ, K1 kickboxer. Gave me his time, gave me his energy, and taught me the essence of learning how to hold pads. Man, I'd get my left tee bagger to train with Ray Seffo. That's crazy. Man, it, it, I, I, I was so fortunate to have a guy like Ray just to say, yeah, no problem. Come in and learn. You know, and then and then holding is one thing, right? Learning how to hold pads. Then how do you correct mistakes and how do you see it and how do you do it? I mean, it took time. It took it took a lot of time. Yeah. But it was Ray gave me that time, man. Without Ray, you know, I don't, I don't think I'm sitting here today. He taught you how to be a coach? I think all of them, man. I think, I think, you know, I think Mike Pyle, I think Jay Haran, I think Dennis Davis, you know, Ray Seffo and Randy Couture and Robert Fallis. You know, like Robert, Robert really took me under his wing. All these people been been around Vinny Magalesh forever, you know. So you're always learning, right? I think I think as a coach, you always have to be coachable. You can never feel like you know it all and you, and you can never have that attitude. But you know, when I'm around Randy, man, I'm just always Hey, picking his brain, you know, picking Still. his brain. Oh, fuck yeah. I have the best mentor in the world in Randy right. Couture. Best mentor in the world. You know, I ain't trying to take marital advice from the dude, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but. That's savage. That is a savage move. Is, is, I got, is, is, he, is he a pimp? <laughs> no, nah, no. Nah, I think he's slowed down, man. He's Still he's, got a nice jawline. He's he probably a yeah. weapon in the streets. He's a handsome dude, man. He's a handsome dude. It. He does his thing. But um, when, it, when it comes to him as a coach. I have a question. Like, you're 2020 Coach of the Year, 2022 Coach of the Year. You're one of the greatest MMA coaches of the decade. You've had champions like Strickland and Nganyu and Aljo. You've worked with everybody. How does someone go into, like, the Nganyu fight? And and I know this is a little off topic, but, you know, I'm watching videos the entire camp of you holding pads with Nganyu, but Mike Tyson basically running as coach. Like, how did that yeah. dynamic work? And how did you as a coach be able to, like, handle boxing now you don't have to worry about kicks and elbows but then also handle you got mike tyson yeah. correcting you yeah no i i think you you use that opportunity as as a learning element right like you know mike was only there for three practices he wasn't there for the entire camp what yeah. social media got me thinking he was there every day yeah no, no, Social media. no he, he was only there for three practices but with that being said you take advantage of the the opportunities that you have with mike tyson you know, like when are you ever going to have that opportunity That's to crazy. learn from him? Every day. Man, no, no, no. Yeah. He wasn't there every day. De Dewey did all the heavy lifting, man. Like no I was traveling, I was gone and Dewey was traveling and he was coming back and, and working and bro, like shout out to my man, Dewey. Like he, he was busting his ass, busting his ass over and over and over, you know, and then Francis brought in uh, John Mumba from uh, France. He knew him from, from out there when he was out there and John really fit the team. Well, and I, I think John did a great job of, really adding to the boxing element and sharpening things up. But when we had Mike Tyson in there, man, you listen. Like when Mike said something, you're like, yes, sir, you got it. You know, and 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 he he applied his element to what, you know, we were doing with the camp. But all in all, man, you know, it was it, day in and day out, it was it was Dewey's show. What do you think would have happened if you didn't listen to Mike Tyson? You thought he was gonna bite your ear or some <laughs> Probably, shit? Probably, man. Like I was like, every time I was like, hey, you gotta double leg this dude because you ain't gonna try to bang with he him. He still got it? 
He, he's bro. It's crazy because you like you see Mike. You're like, bro, this dude can. He's still he's still got really? it. Really? Uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I was holding pads for Francis, and Mike would come over and be like, no, this is what I want. Fucking bang, bang, bang. You feel him hit, hit me through the body shield and hitting. He was like, oh man. He had gloves on or no gloves? Oh, bare knuckle. No bare way. Knuckle. Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. He yeah. still got it. Yeah. Would, would he ever it. get? Would he ever do one of those legend fights out there in Saudi Arabia? I think he would if the money's right. You know, I think he would. I, I, he looked like he was in relatively still good shape. Would you fight? Would you fight Mike Tyson? Man, I have to shoot on him yeah. right away. I'm talking about boxing. Would you fight him? Fuck no. Ten million dollars. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, it's, 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 it's crazy to think that you would have to fight Mike Tyson. That's like me saying I'm going to go fight Rampage. Like you know right. you're going to lose. You're just getting a bag. Yeah. I yeah, don't yeah. think anybody at his age or within plus or minus five years could beat him. I mean, it's impossible. You know, I, I it, it was something more to me, and and I think Rampage can attest to this. It was just the psyche. It was just like the aura and the psyche that this, this man carries. You know, I've said this before. I haven't met Mike Tyson. When I the first time ever walking out with Francis Ngannou, it was like he had a Mike Tyson effect to him. You know, you felt like you see it felt that shit in the crowd. Like people were like cheering, but they're like, ooh, it's like watching a, a, a like a, a great white shark or something. You know, just a, <laughs> just this cage animal. You know, and, and Francis, is the nicest guy in the world, man. He's my nice, he's yeah. my son's best friend. You know, my seven year old's best friend, right. right? But when you see this dude, and that then you see that cage door lock and then pins drop. And you see the opponent across the way, and they're like, "Oh shit, I'm locked in the cage with this motherfucker now." Different, bro. Bro, it's different. Give me bro. the chills right now with bro. the pin yeah. drop. Yeah, bro. Bro. and I forget, bro. And, and I forget every time I forget how big he is. I went and took a I went and took a picture with him a long time ago in Vegas at a uh, like some MMA awards thing. I had to delete the picture because I was fat as fuck. <laughs> Everybody started making fun of me. I was like, "Fuck!" And I'm, I've been a big fan yeah. of friends. I put it as soon as I got the picture, I posted, and, and, and nobody cared. I took a picture with friends. Everybody talking about how fat I was. So I was like, "Fuck!" So I was like, "Friends, I gotta get another picture with you. I look real fat in the last one." He was like, "Yeah, I right, get come a on. different angle." Yeah, you know? get nah, some but it was, on. it was time went by and I lost a lot of weight. Yes, and I was like, I took a picture with him that I then saw the Raven. I'm like. Damn, I forgot how big he was. You're the fucking legend in that picture, bro. No, nah, he's the A side of that picture. Right, man. Him, this, there's on, a man. photo, there, bro. There's a photo of like 60 legends, right? Yeah. And then there's another one, and it's like maybe half the people in Rampage yeah. is in it. Yo, Rampage, there's a photo of like 60 legends. Where are you? And then I'm like looking, I'm like, why are you all the way in the back? Like, I gotta like zoom in. Bro, this is the thing. Coach got mad at me because I didn't want to go to the, I didn't really want to go to all the festivities or all yeah. this stuff. I don't do well around a bunch of celebrities and stuff like that. Yeah. There's too many legends mm -hmm. there and, and all, there's too much, because I feel energy. Mm -hmm. I'm very weird. Like a lot of people don't know that. I don't talk about it a lot. And I, I feel people's energy and stuff like that. Yeah. And like over the years and stuff like that, I, I just, I just like, just been like paying attention to it more and more because at first I thought, ah, oh, maybe I'm a weirdo. Maybe I'm crazy. And I've been ripped off by a lot of people. You know, I feel so not that, listening bro. to that. I feel yep. like, like, ah, I'm crazy. I'm crazy. But so, so now I feel, I feel a lot of people energy. I still don't say much. Mm -hmm. But then, if you ever see me not really like fucking with somebody, not like it, they don't mean they're a bad person. Yeah. I just don't. I just, like, just don't know it yet. I don't. Yeah. Just, I don't yeah. like he's very energy. real too. Like yeah. he's not gonna be like, oh, so, like he's a nice guy, but he's not. He's not someone that's gonna polish you off just to be like he's the realest dude in the game. No, you know yeah. what? And, and it's very, very it's much like like, like Francis. Francis yeah. the same way. Mm -hmm. Francis is very reserved, very quiet. You know, he's he's not going to show his cards right away. He actually said that to me after um, the Junior Dos Santos fight. We were in the green room, and I'm back there eating a pizza. We're hanging out, and then Francis comes, sits down. He's got his nice suit on. He has a little slice of pizza hanging out with me. And he's like, you know, I've been testing you. I was like, what, testing me for what? And he's like, you real. You care about me. He's like, you're not here for no other bullshit. You actually care about me and, and you know, from here on out, I want you to be my coach. Mm. Well, that was right, right after the right after the Junior DeSantis fight, wow. and I was like, "Oh man, like it meant a lot." But I but I understood like he's been burned. He's had a, he's had tough relationships with other coaches. Yeah. And, and I want that's an African theme because that's how me and Congo uh, got close to. I think Congo text, tested me a long time ago, but he he never he never he never came to say anything. But uh, Congo might not know that I that I noticed. But one time, you know, when I first met Congo, he didn't speak English. Uh, really? Uh, yeah, yeah. We flew Congo in. Uh, cause uh, cause I had to fight Chuck Liddell, and 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 Congo was a monster, and I was still gun shy because Vanderlei knocked me out. So I said, I to myself, I like I said before, I never trained with like big top name people, but I I flew in Congo because I met him before. I'm like, man, this guy's a monster. Because I always think like, who would I be? Because I'm not scared to fight nobody. I'm, yeah. But I was like, but if I was scared to fight, if I was afraid to fight somebody, who would I be afraid to fight? I was, and it was Congo. Mm -hmm. So I, I I I brought him in anyway. 
and I didn't I didn't know I didn't know him that well and we got to know each other then I always start um learning English. But you know I joke around and stuff all the time. I always been that way. But one time he had his headphones in and he was pretending like he was listening to music, but he was listening Listen to, to you see, talking. See, he was testing to see what we were talking shit about. But I've never yeah. I've never talked shit about Congo behind Where's me. he from? He he's he's from France. He grew up in France, but, yeah. he, but I think his his family's from Congo in Africa. Okay. Wherever the fuck that is. That dude's a specimen, bro. Yeah. Yeah. If I look like him, I would never wear a shirt. That's crazy. He's I know. Walking around he's got the fucking, craziest build. Yeah. It's funny how the, he tested you because you weren't talking crap, and then fast forward, all you guys do is clown each other. That's all we do. But, but when we're, we we're clown, yeah, then yeah. I know we're family. Yeah, you know? yeah, like, yeah. we brothers. Now. Yeah, that man. Is true. Our locker room is just us ripping on each other all day, and that's the way it's supposed yeah. to be, man. That's that's the brotherhood. That's the family. That's yeah. that's why we do it. When yeah. you talk about training, I think a lot of people have this misconception that, like, you know, obviously you're learning from Randy Couture, and you, yeah. you're getting to see Mike Tyson in person, and you yeah. have all these opportunities. You've also learned from all these other greats. Ray is obviously one of the greats. Yeah. What is it something about like Mike Mike Tyson? Like we talked to everybody about this and there's this misconception that like, oh yeah, he's going to come in there and just make you a great fighter. But most people that know fighting or are students of the game like yourself say, no, it's his aura. It's his, it's his ideas. It's sure. his logic. It's like, what is it about him? Cause I'm still trying to wrap my head around this, this legacy, this mythical creature of Mike Tyson. I, everybody always loves hearing about it too. Yeah. I, I think that, you know, it doesn't always have to be about X's and O's or about like learning how to throw the jab better or this better or anything like that. I think sometimes it's just about their approach to the game. I think it's about the way they carry themselves. I think it's sometimes it's about their attitude, you know, and, and I feel like Mike's a guy that like, you know, even Rampage was saying that there was, he feared no man in front of him. And he had this calm demeanor about him, but it was very like chaotic as well, right? Like he was calm, he spoke calm, he spoke quiet. But when he talked like, about knock this motherfucker, you're like, oh, okay, this dude ain't playing. This dude ain't playing about any, any, and the other side of that coin too, you could tell this man loves combat sports. He loves boxing. He loves MMA too. He loves MMA. Like you could just tell his, his love and his passion. And then, you know, we had a practice where, you know, it was hard, man. It was a hard, and I could tell Francis wanted to quit. Not quit. It was just like, okay, I'm, I'm good. I'm done. Like I did enough rounds, but there was something about Mike that Francis, when Mike said, no, we're going to do more. We're going to do some, some ab work. We're going to do some core work. You know, Francis and I could, I could, I could tell in his, in his, you know, back of his mind, he's like, no, I'm good, man. Like we, we call this practice, but it was Mike Tyson. How do you say no? You don't. You don't. <laughs> and guess what? We did another fucking four rounds of ab work. And I think that what happens is when you get done with that, that little inner bitch inside of you that said, no, nah, I'm good. I hit my wall. Then all of a sudden you're like, well, I just broke through that wall. There's, 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 I can go into deeper waters now. Right. You know? And I think that's the thing that Mike brought out of us in that camp is like, yo, this ain't, this ain't your fucking limit. You got more. Mm. You could push a little further. You can do a little bit more, you know? And, and, and a guy like Francis who fought Cyril gone on one leg, blown out knee, he got tested a little bit by Mike and Mike brought the best out of all of us, man. Every, every single one of us that we didn't hit our limit. We could pull out more. Real, real talk though. When you knew that Mike Tyson was coming to camp, did you write down a list of words that you wanted to hear him say? <laughs> <laughs> nah, man. Like, Hey, he got, he, I would say he, he kind of got mad at me. Uh, the first, what? yeah, it was, it was funny. I, I, I'll, I'll drop this. I'll drop this for the Jackson pod. Oh. But uh, so, for, so first day, you know, Dewey worked with them. Dewey was there. I was just kind of sitting around helping out, whatever, just being there. Next day, Dewey flies out, you know, bro, I've been holding pads for Francis for five years. You know, I think Mike was just like, who the fuck's this white boy? You know, he ain't going to do shit. <laughs> and uh, so all I did was, all I did was I had, Dewey had wrote down like, you know, kind of what the, what we do on a day in and day out, what our practices look like. And I'll have my notebook, like a nerd. I went over to Mike. I said, Hey Mike, pleasure, whatever you want. It's your show today. Um, Dewey wrote down kind of what we always do, but Hey, it's your world, whatever you want. And Mike looks at it, he's like, what is this? He's like, nah, this ain't enough. And I was like, okay, like I said, whatever you want, <laughs> the world is yours, you know? He's like, nah, we're going to do it. We're going to do it my way. And this is something like, you, yes, sir, you got it, Mike. You know, we're going to do it your way. But the funny part about it is we ended up doing the workout and it was exactly what the fuck I wrote down. <laughs> I was like, it's the exact same shit. I was like, yo. And then um, I did have in, the, in my notes, I said, hey, I want to do two rounds of Southpaw. And he's like, why would we do two rounds of Southpaw? I was like, Mike, trust me, like this motherfucker is very good at Southpaw and we want to have a, a different type of approach 
than a conventional style boxer. We're fighting one of the best conventional boxers in the world. I think we have to color outside the lines a little bit and do some shit that like most motherfuckers won't be accustomed to. Nah, nah, we ain't do that. And then, then we like, yo, we're squeezing a little bit of Southpaw. He's like, oh, this fucker's good out of Southpaw. Like, I'm trying to tell you, Mike, like, you know, I- France is good at Southpaw? Man, you saw it. You saw it in yeah, the fight, yeah, right? Yeah. Like, I, I feel like his Southpaw cross is actually better, more f- like sharper than his orthodox I, cross. I got, I got to tell you guys uh, um, something that I don't really talk about. I'm, 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 reason, one reason why I would never want to come and tell you to do anything like that. I'm very weird. I, sometimes I can't tell when people Southpaw. Yeah, I I could tell when I watch a fight. I could tell somebody's southpaw, mm. but I can't tell which one. I'm like, which one of them motherfuckers southpaw? Yeah, I'm I'm the weirdest. I'm the weirdest person <laughs> when it comes to that. That's yeah. why I never want to come and take fights or nothing like that. I don't want to do that. Shit. Now, I don't think anybody would care if you uh, they, knew if they were southpaw or not. They would want to hear you commentate. Uh, yeah, for for sure, you don't, you don't think they'll make fun of me because no, I can't because no. I can't tell. I, I saw him. I saw. Uh, uh, what's his name? Tyson went uh, Southpaw first, right? We matched it. Yeah. So you know, that was nice because we had some really good sparring partners that came out and gave us a very good look. And then there was a there was a time where we were, we were sparring this kid, Jackson. He was from Australia, fucking sharp. And then um, came out, did 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 okay in the first round, but Francis was getting better out of him. And then second round, he came out and, and switched to Southpaw. And Francis was having a little hard time out of the open stance. And then going into the third round, I was like, hey, just match his stance. Go Southpaw, Southpaw. You're you're better Southpaw than he is. Oh, okay. And Francis comes out fucking laces and bam, left hand. So I think the, uh, as camp grew on, he was getting more and more confident with his Southpaw. And that was something we implemented early on. We, you know, Dewey and I talked about like, hey, they're going to shut our right hand down, right? I mean, that's our that's this is the big thing you're going to worry about is our right hand. And we saw that right away in the first round. Tyson wasn't really jabbing Francis's face. He was jabbing his rear hand. He was occupying it. He was keeping it busy. So you can't really throw the overhand. You can't really throw the right hand because you're parrying the whole time. So, okay, let, let's change the delivery mechanism. Let's, um, let's, let's catch a jab, throw a jab. Let's catch a jab, come over top. Let's slip the jab and come over top of the right hand. Let's, let's do some other things. But by switching to southpaw, now our power hand, the delivery mechanism is now forward. It's the front hand. So now we can do a lot of different things that maybe a you know conventional boxer isn't accustomed to. So we were playing that parry game, the parry game. We'd throw the left hand to his rear hand. And what was Tyson doing? Hand would come down, hand would come down, and we'd use it to come over top into a switch stance. We were switching our stances. We were going southpaw into orthodox. So the delivery mechanism came different. We're just wow, crazy. That's, that's next level. Now that yeah. I think about it, because that's how he actually was throwing that overhand too. Yeah, so it, you know we were doing a lot of things out of the southpaw stance. One of them was the reload. We would go left cross to gallop reload to the left overhand if we would get that hand to parry. So we had some different things we were trying to set up there that, you know, about five or six different things out of Southpaw that we worked a lot in that camp. And, you know, Dewey was big on getting downstairs and attacking the body, uh, jabbing the body, the high lows, to try to get him to parry, to come over top. You said that. Yeah, it was brilliant, bro. Like, you know, so every, everyone added their little bit of element. I try to stay more in my MMA lane and keep the things that we already did really well against Stipe, right? Like when you, when you watch him fight Stipe, we, we switched stances a lot. We did a lot of different things because, you know, we've been working on that shit and bro, it was, it was working great. As a coach, as a coach, uh, would you, and as a coach, if you was Tyson Fury's coach, would you make him get that belly down in, in the shape a little bit better though? Because he's like he's like hanging all over. the Yeah, place. you know it was interesting when he walked out when I, when he, when I was um, back to when he was wrapping hands. Right. He came out of the bathroom and he was putting on the on the on the cup or the girdle thing, right. bro. I was like, this motherfucker's legs are like this then he looked like grew like yeah from despicable me like he was top heavy as all can be like there's no so no that's a great point rampage like I, I, aesthetically it it just doesn't look right you know what i'm saying like it didn't look right and we and we wanted to attack his body we went in after really his body soft. it looks really yeah. soft yeah and and the one thing that uh you know in in our breakdown and, and you know dewey was big on this was tyson was so good at leaning out of the way mm-hmm. But when you lean out of the way, this will always be there. This doesn't move. This was a sitting target. Mm-hmm. So we wanted to we wanted to go high to low or low to high to the, to the body. But all the while, what were we doing with our feet? 
the feet were still coming behind us. I didn't even care if this landed. Mm-hmm. You know, there was a combination we call the one body, and, and Francis threw it against Stipe and almost landed in the first round. We call it one body. It's a high jab, low jab. But all the while, I'm collecting my feet to set up my overhand, you know. Mm-hmm. So that's a lot of the game plan was to attack the body, attack the chest, um, you know, wear if, on them, stay heavy. If I was Francis, I would be worried, worried about losing my glove and his belly. Oh, he big hit. boy. That was, that, that was like all dope. But you know what? The one thing I noticed, though, about uh, – about Tyson and his and his frame, I knew a lot of that clinch game was going to work. I was like, "Yo, man, we're, we're, this is going to work." Yeah, dude. Like, what about the elbow? Bro, I elbowed him right in the fucking head. Yeah, and, wait, and, no one talked about that. Nobody talked about that. He el- he elbowed Francis and didn't even phase him. He didn't kept intentional. Him. We were losing. Ah, I, I would hate yeah. to say it, yeah, was. it was. It was. It was intentional. He's I'm gonna let him speak MMA, for it. Anybody, yeah. Come on, you can, MMA, you can tell he was frustrated yeah. in the moment. Yeah. Um, can you say that was an overhand? I never seen an overhand come fucking down the way it did. Teofimo like Lopez, that, you know? when Teofimo Lopez, one of the best boxers in the world, said, "Come on, bro. Anybody who's a professional boxer knows that's not how you're gonna throw it." Oh, an overhand. Not- so, yeah. Yeah, so think about. So think about it. Should have been a point. Mm. Should have been a point. Should have been a point. Because think about if if Francis would have threw it on him. Man, Dewey was losing his mind when he saw it. Yeah, I mean, and rightfully so, because, you know, that that ultimately could have been the fight. Do you remember, I, I got to go back and watch the fight. I haven't, I haven't seen it, but do you remember there was a point, I want to say it was around six or seven. It was in our corner. There was a clinch position, and Francis hit Tyson the same way he hit uh, Cain Velasquez. And fucking, but but then also kind of like knee tapped him, like not knee tapped him, but like tripped him, like a tie trip, mm-hmm. and and Tyson Fury fell under the ropes. Yeah, my motherfucker was like, it was a knockdown. Yeah, the yeah. uppercut caught him. Yeah, but it looked like the trip is what he and and then his because I'm telling you this because his eyes were looking yeah. right at me. Uh-huh. And me and Dewey were like, oh shit, he's hurt. But did his glove touch the mat though? His knees did though. Oh, I didn't know that. His knees it- did though, but the the ref. I think looked at it as a trip. Coach, if your knees touch the, uh, if you, if in that situation, your knees touch the, the ground, is that considered a knockdown? Oh, oh so or yeah. your hands. Like, oh, wow. yeah. So, so they won't call. So, Oh, wow. yeah. The ref won't call that if it looked like a trip. Oh, yeah, because if I remember, crazy. I got to go back and watch it, man. Mm-hmm. It was Bro, one of those so things. Crazy. But he had that collar tie, that plum, the Randy Couture dirty box, mm. uppercut, and then took that that right side on the tricep and just kind of hit him with that is, that trip. Is that legal? The dirty box? Yeah, right there it was for oh, sure. Just like an inside, cl- like an uppercut. Man, we clinch. had just a, just a straight up plum collar tie on. So, him. so it's crazy. Yep. So, Probably didn't see it. So, so would Francis be willing to box again? Oh yeah, hundred percent. Uh, but, but who's yeah. going to want to box? Who, who's no, going? To, no. no one's going to want to fight him now. No. But I think what he did to um, Tyson. But I think a lot of boxers can see that Tyson Fury underestimated him and probably didn't train. Yeah. I think he did. I think he trained, but I don't think he knew what he was training for. He had nothing to watch. He had nothing yeah, to watch. yeah. I don't think he, he knew what he was training for. Power. You know, and and I think that I think to you know. To play devil's advocate, I think Tyson Fury might fare better next time because he's been in there and felt and kind of understood that. Well, but there was also things that we didn't get to show. You know, there's a lot of things that we didn't get to do that I felt like we could have done better as well on our on our end, you know. So I would love that rematch, man. Me too. I really yeah, would. Yeah, I would bro. love to watch him rematch. I, 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 I called this first fight. Mm. I called it. it, it He's went, the only one. Uh, yeah. The one guy interviewed me, the one guy, the British guy, he said he interviewed 40 people. He said I was the only one that had it right. But even here, uh, even you know, I was wrong because I, I thought I thought Francis was gonna win. Yeah. But but he yeah. did he did win. Fuck that. But man, but how proud of you though were you, man? Like MMA, bro. Bro, right? MMA. Like I couldn't be more proud of that guy. Bro, his was, story, bro. Everything. Like, just uh, everything about him. I didn't know all that stuff until the lead up. I didn't yeah. know all that stuff. Yeah, man. I didn't know all He's that. Got one of the most insane stories of it's the it's it, it is the rocky story it's for the sure. craziest story of all time yeah he did a, he did that rogan podcast and I, I went out there with him this is before he fought stipe and i was actually kind of surprised to hear francis tell the story like his entire story i've known him for a while and you know he comes to my house he's been you know at my dinner and uh, he don't talk about it. not talk about a lot he will it's not like it's like ptsd for him it's just don't bring it up man but being being in the room and hearing him hearing him tell his story was um you know gives you it gives you more purpose as a coach right like me and coach are talking about like how do you connect with your fighter and what makes him tick 
you hear these things about you about your about your brother you're like okay now these are things i can draw upon in the in, in you know when we need it right we're going in around 10 and, and me and dewey looked at him like yo bro this is your destiny man yeah. like this is this is your fucking this is your story you know let's go out there and finish this guy let's go out there and go put a you know put an explanation point on this thing and he jumped off that stool and you know that was something randy always taught us like hey body language get off that stool and bounce yeah and he jumped off that fucking stool and he started bouncing he's looking at him like i look at dewey i'm like yo bro we're gonna, get, we're gonna go get this motherfucker right here. We're gonna oh, go yeah. beat him, bro. We're oh, gonna yeah, go beat him. Oh yeah, it was, you know, I, it was like butterflies for me. I got, I got no connection to Francis. Yeah, no connection to none. You got just well, MMA. Yeah, I, MMA. I'm friends with Dewey. Yeah, I've always looked up to Dewey when yeah. he was fighting K1. I've always been a fan of him. Legend. Yeah, but I got, but it's just MMA, and, and I only get nervous for the fights that. Uh, that I really, when I really want somebody to win, yeah. I get. I was sitting in front row, nervous. Cause it's MMA. I was screaming MMA all day. Yeah. But I wanted to ask you about um the weird the weirdest thing. So Izzy is close close friends with yeah. with uh, Francis. Yep. And then you train Strickland to beat yeah. Izzy. Izzy. Yeah. How how is that with Izzy and you and, and uh, you know I, I same same approach. Like I, I look at it as as you know Randy is just uh, man. I'm a competitor. That's all. You know it's it's, it's, it's business for me. My feelings aren't involved um, with it. I got most utmost respect and love for Izzy. I've learned a ton from him. I've broke him down. I've watched him. I watch him from, from a perspective of what can I learn and how can we be better? I have fighters that have the same body type as Israel Adesanya. Mm -hmm. What can I take from Izzy and apply it to these fighters? Because what he's doing is, is you know, he's fucking one of the best in the world. Bro, he's tall as fuck, too. I had no idea he's that tall. He's tall, bro, you know? So, um, and then on the flip side of that, man, I, you know, I'm a, I'm a hired gun. You know, like you slide a name across the table. I look at the name and I'm like, okay, we got to go execute that name. Well, I like this. I like that. It is like, what it is. Like it is, what it is. But Strickland, right? Uh, he's, a, he's a savage. He's a savage. Like, how, how how is he not canceled already, that guy? Yeah, just give it time. <laughs> just give it now time. That he got the, not, not, now he got that belt. I think I think people are going to be. I, actually, you know what? I, I think he's gotten better. I don't think they can, though, at this point. And I. In my personal opinion, I think Strickland is the champ that UFC needs. I've been telling you this yeah, for months. For a I, I don't know. think they wanted him at I, first, though. No, he, he I was don't at think my so house. Either. No, he was at my house six yeah. months ago, a year ago. Yeah, a year ago. Yeah, and and I'm telling you right now, you can ask him. I'm not making this up. Strickland has because I watched him fight at the Ruka at the at the Ruka gym, mm -hmm. and I watched him do that whole craziness with Orlando R.I.P. Yeah. And I was like, dude, this guy's a monster. He like doesn't care, you know. He reminds me of Mayhem back in the day. It, I'm it, telling you, yeah. But he's yeah. he's very he's very aware though. He's not. I don't think people realize that. I don't even know him like that. But I watched him in the gym. He's aware of what's going on. Yeah. Mayhem was a little. No, yeah. late, listen. Later on, yeah. Mayhem. Later on, Mayhem was got like he got into drugs or something bad. Yeah. Mayhem changed. But before when we was our team punishment, Mayhem and what's his name, Sean Strickland. Yeah. They was a lot of like the yeah. stuff they say and everything. Mayhem is very intelligent and he he was very aware and all this stuff. But then uh Mayhem got really famous with when um he was doing that uh that bully beat down. Bully beat yeah. down. Yeah. And then he moved to Hawaii or so. He went to Hawaii one time and he saw how much attention he got. He got real famous there, so he moved there. Oh. Because he 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 the first time getting famous because back in those days in MMA you you wasn't famous. Yeah, no one if knew. you was doing MMA to be famous, you're doing it for the wrong reason. Yep. But he got famous and then the fame went to his head. I guess he started doing certain type of drugs and then not him up. messed him up. So yeah. but he he was like yeah. strictly how he would say whatever on his mind. Sean Sean is such a an interesting guy in the regards of I feel like he's a breath of fresh air in this day and age because of his realness. Mm -hmm. He ain't gonna say He's not going to talk shit behind your back. He's going to say it to your face. You know, he's going to wear his emotions on his sleeves. And when he says something, and, and as far as like the way he represents himself, he, you no, know, they try to give him a, a brand new fucking truck, like a hundred thousand dollar truck. He goes, no, nah, that's not who I am and what I represent. Like I, 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 I'm representing the everyday working class, man. And if I can buy that truck, I will, if I can afford it, I will, but I'm not going to take a truck and drive a truck because you're going to hand it to me. You know, I want to represent, I don't want to make people feel bad about, you know, that's what, respect. How can yeah, you not man. rally behind No, no, listen, nah, he, that's, he's, that's, he's that's solid, that's, bro. That's solid. That's respect. And that he even thinking on, on that level. Cause a lot of people don't think on that level. Like I'm from the people and stuff too, but somebody will give me a hundred thousand dollar truck. I'm like, hell yeah. Oh, take if it I too. like the truck, oh, yeah. I'm gonna take it, but I, I, but he I puts love his it. money's where his mouth is. Yeah, like that's what he represents. Yeah, but yeah. You, you, you're not, you're not. I don't think that that it's not even a bad thing that you take the truck. No. It's just who he is as right, a person. Right. So yeah. I think that you got to respect that. Yeah, you yeah. got to respect that. I like him and stuff like he's that. Just real. He's just he's, he's, real. Page, he's one of the best 
teammates you're ever gonna find, really? bro. I'm I see him beating you. everybody up in the gym though on Instagram. It's, it's not like that. Okay. He he it's has he has he has times where he's gone to other gyms, but he's announced that. Mm. He said, look, I wanna fight. In a, and if anybody wants to jump, it's not like yeah. there's, there's, there, if, if Rampage came to the gym and said, yo, E, like I want to spar light. And all of a sudden we started fighting. That wasn't the terms of the agreement. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That wasn't the agreement. Now, if you call somebody out and say, yo, I want to fight. I'm going to go to this gym. Let's fight. He's never done that at extreme. He's gone hard with people, mm -hmm. but it's been a, it's been a gentleman's agreement on how hard we're going to spar today. Right. right. But this dude wins the world title, takes a week off. And comes back because this guy has a fight. This guy has a fight. This guy has a fight. And he's like, yo, these dudes helped me get ready for my fight. I need to be there to help them get ready for their fight. And and he's in there, bro. And like when I, went to, when I was in Saudi Arabia, he was running my practices, bro. Because he's like, insane. yo. Like, yeah. You always like, talk about these superstars that you trained with that you would help them. They would go fight. You come back and they're not there for you. I, yeah, yeah. I come in. I come in yesterday. I come in yesterday. Or uh, what's it? Well, I come in yeah, Monday. Me. Yeah. Hey, he's mopping the mats. The mats were dirty. He didn't, hey, mats were, were dirty. This guy's world champion right now. Does, does he, you know, tell somebody to go mop the mats? Nope. Grab the mop bucket. Grab the, hey. That's the, respect. I, I like him even more. Yeah, I, I want to you, 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 you don't see that in the gym often, huh? Yeah. You don't see where Travis is. And, 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 hey, he's not, he's not Bro, trying he's to post it and make air. it. Yeah. He's right. not trying to be the guy, look at me, look at me. Right. I'm telling you as, as, the, as the coach in the gym that sees it on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you guys, mm -hmm. the dude's a good teammate. He's going to pull the best That's out of awesome. you. His, his approach is, his approach can be different. His approach is old school, right? When he's like, well, where you at? You fucking pussy. How come you ain't training today, man? Fuck you. Where you at? Nothing wrong with that. Nothing, but, but, but people, oh, he's mean. He's, yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what? yeah, yeah. I you know what? That. No, he wants to see the best out of you. He's the, trying to pull the best the, the out world, of you. The world right now is just oh, soft. soft homie. That's soft. That's what the soft, problem is. And yeah. So me... The only reason why I even brought up about him getting canceled yet is because he said something that I'm not going to say if I agree with it or disagree with it. But when I say this, you guys can make your own your own decision if I agree with or disagree with it. When he was talking about something, I can't quote him word by word, but he was talking about the women <laughs> uh, <laughs> being in the, the kitchen. Oh yeah, yeah something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, it, look, man, my my mom ran a multi million dollar company. Yeah. You know, and, and his his point was he feels like we're losing the sanctity of a home. And and had he, had he, a good point. he and had, had he said it point. correctly, you know, he, and this is what I love about about, about coaching him too. Rampage is, is sometimes I don't coach him as the athlete. I try to make him a better human being. Yeah. So we had a practice one day, and, and he did great. He was fucking a lot of dudes up. Way he was, it was all it was all grappling. He was getting guys with body locks and the air chair, and, and guys were trying to grab me out. And he was he was just doing a great job. Right after practice, he's like, man, I was fucking you guys up today. You want to know how I was fucking you guys up today? I was doing blah, 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 blah. And Brad Tavares and the rest of the dudes, you know how it is. It's your ego, man. Fuck you, bro. Like, what are you, why are you going to come at me like that? His, his, his heart was in the right place. He, he wanted to show him what he was doing to beat you guys. But it was it was a delivery. Yeah, delivery, no, yeah. bro. Like, hey, and, he, and and they all left. They all took off. And Sean looks at me. He's like, man, how come they, you know, I'm just trying to help. I'm like, hold on. How about you say this? Hey, guys, great practice today. <laughs> Here's how I was getting you guys with X, Y, and Z. Yeah. Here's how I think we can improve yeah. on that because the better you get, the better I get. So let's yeah. do it like this. Oh, yeah, that's a pretty good way. If we're, we're in a coach, maybe I'll do that next time. You know, yeah. so. I need a coach like this. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah. I'm always yelling at yeah. everybody. We got to do this. We got to do that. It, my heart's in the right place. Yeah, work harder. But it's not about work harder. It's just you, you got to be a team player. But I think a guy like that, I don't ever want him to change because I no, like I like yeah, the way nah, he is. Man. No, no, yeah, he, yeah, he's yeah. so different for the UFC right now. We haven't seen an American like this that's champion. He gives me like these like not Randy Couture vibes, but he gives me this like yeah. just hard body American. The white blue collar man. He's a blue collar yeah. hard worker. Wears a white t shirt, white t shirt every day, jeans and boots. You, you don't know? think he ever like make millions and millions of dollars and then go and be blinged out and never, no. never. You know, I was actually trying to get him to come out here with me on, on this trip, and he was like, ah, I just don't know if it's my you know. If it's my brand. It's my style. It's just, I'm like, listen, I don't, I don't, I understand where you're coming from, but I only work with people that I vibe with. And I vibe with bear. I've known bear for years now. I fuck with him. So I'm like, Hey, if my boy, if it's my boy's brand, I'm gonna get behind my boy's brand. That's, that's the bottom line. But he doesn't know bear like that. I'm like, right. well, come out, come out and hang with them. Come out and meet with the dude. And he's like, oh, maybe I'll do that right now. I'm in camp. But you know, I say, you don't have to wear the gold chains. You don't want to wear the gold chains. Yeah. Yeah. From the middle of the ring. He's in the middle of practice. 
talk, say hi. Yeah. Good dude. Yeah. He's and, a good and, solid dude. And he's yeah. in Vegas, right? He's in Vegas. He's out there full time now, right. man. Well, tell him I'm, I'm a fan of his. Let's and go I will. I will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm down. Yeah. I've, been, I've been watching him. And that point when he talked about the women should be in the kitchen, I like I said, I wish he would have worded it different. But when I listened to the whole thing, I said, let me hear him out. Yeah. He he made some good points because the world was different when mm-hmm. when uh, it was a family when a family kind of like raised their kids to have certain values yeah. and the school yeah so but was, when you when you understand where he's coming from through his upbringing through the lens of his his view of the world yeah. I think that's the thing that we lack in this day and age is empathy right. I think when we hear something we associate it to our lens right when we don't take a second to look outside of of our lens and look through their lens right. it's like well where, how is he a brought up you know what, what was his home life like right and they're like okay maybe he's saying this because of 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 a, of a way that he's been a psychological right. way of way he's been you know, but what hurt. you're saying is right too i mean delivery 100 percent. what you're saying is right like delivery we're in a day and age though where you know my sister she's an attorney and my other sister is going to uci and she's they're all they want to save the planet and they're all about yeah women empowerment it's uh it's also this day and age where you can't kind of subject 100%. Like, okay you're here you're here so yeah. now women are just as powerful as men and like my sister would kill me if i was in a room with someone that said that and i didn't say something you know yeah my yeah, sister, yeah. and i got a daughter yeah. my daughter's a bad feminist but uh, but i tell my daughter like i'm like you wrong i i, I but I love my daughter. You know but she I mean, gets mad. Yeah, she gets mad at me if I if I say anything that she thinks is sexist. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. But I'm tell, I tell my daughter, listen, I love you, but you're wrong. Feminist is going to lead you down like the uh, 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 wrong. Yeah. You know. So and th- that's what I love about our gym and the environment that we have in our gym is, listen, there's not everything you're going to say that I'm going to agree with. Exactly. But it doesn't mean that I don't still love you. I don't still support you. There's certain things that are are fucking hard nos for me. Yeah. No, bro, I can't fuck with you if you're like this or if you're, you know, a racist piece of shit or you're doing this or you're saying yeah. this. I can't fuck with you. It's good. But if you don't agree with a certain political stance, you want to take the vaccine, you don't want to take the vaccine. <laughs> good man, you want to wear a mask, you don't want to wear a mask. It is what it is, bro. You know, Israel, Palestine, man, I love you guys all, right? Like, like, under this roof, under this banner of extreme couture, we're going to get along together. Yeah. That's the way I grew up. I grew up playing football. I didn't give a fuck where you're from, what street you lived on. Can you catch this ball? I'm going to throw you. Then you're my boy. You're my teammate. That's Can the way it is. Can you catch these balls? <laughs> catch these <Can> you? balls. <laughs> what, what, are you, what are you talking about? No, I don't know. No, wait, wait, wait where are you going with that? No, I'm a quarterback. No, no, quarterback. No, throw no, the ball. No, catch him. No, I, I don't, I, I'm not falling for his tricks. Yeah. He, no, got, he got mad at me because- yeah, one trick a yeah, day. Yeah, no. he got, he, he's mad he's trying to pay me back because- uh, Cause, cause last uh, podcast I asked him, do he like the ladies? You like the ladies, don't you? I like the ladies. You like yeah, my man. ladies nuts on your ah! face. <laughs> From these suck on these mountains. No, for like 30 minutes, he's saying Bouchesha's name. You know, Bouchesha, 13 time world yeah, champion. You I just walked him, in. Yeah, he's yelling Bruschetta. Bruschetta. Like, no, I was saying, I was saying, I was saying Bucetta. Yeah. That's yeah. Portuguese. No. You know, we got headphones. I'm Italian. He's eating with my family yeah. before. I'm like, oh, you want, you want, you want bruschetta. bruschetta? Yeah. Bruschetta. He's like, no, bruschetta. Br- br- I'm like, yeah, just stop. Bruschetta. Yeah. Bruschetta. So as we go into It's kind of like side. Panocha. <laughs> Busetta. He's a he's a sexual freak. He's no, I'm not. Actually, weird stuff. actually, I'm yes, not. Yes, it is. Yes, yes I'm gonna tell you something. I'm yes, telling you, I got legendary. No, no I'm say not. It. Say I'm it. legendary. The story's a legendary this rampage. Is, when was this coach? Uh, yesterday? Was this yesterday, yesterday or the day girls. before? I, when I got when I got annoyed by a phone call early. Was it yesterday? Yesterday. Yesterday, Antonio McKee called me early in the morning. Antonio McKee. Yeah. I love him to death. Yeah. He's he's one of my coaches. The best trainer of all time. Yeah. Yeah. Is that your grandma? Yeah, he trains my son. Yeah. He calls me early in the morning and he's preaching to me. And he tells me that I'm a sex addict. <laughs> the problem with that is that I'm not a sex addict. I'm not. I might have to agree with coach. No, no, no I'm, I, honestly, I'm not. I am. Do I look like a sex addict? You look like you like sex a lot. Yeah. What man training? don't? I what man you, don't? What would you, you rather do? Have sex or go train? And you've said multiple times, have sex. You look like yeah, you pay some tuitions. In, oh my! In the strip club, yeah. that is nice. But I don't have sex with that them. That was a nice. But I'm saying, but like, it looks like you you might have. I've made it rain in strip club. So are you a sex yeah. addict? No, or not? I'm not. You I, pay for some nursing degrees, and you know. Yeah, but I don't. I don't pay for sex though. He just says, oh. "Yeah," and then moves on. <laughs> no, no, no. I keep, no, I like to be honest. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't like hookers. But I've been. I've been in the game for like uh-huh. about sixteen years now. No, I'm not a sex addict. So why would he think that? Because he was one. 
Uh, he no, was takes one. one to no one. Right? No, 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 no. He's he's very religious now, and so he was his problem. His problem was sex. He was a sex addict, and he talks about it all the time. And the only reason why I know he's a sex addict because he told me, and he told me all this stuff. And he told me something. You're supposed to be saying this on our podcast. I keep it real. All right. And so you brought up that I was a sex addict. I'm like, no, 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 no. I never even used the word sex addict. You did say that. No, I didn't. When I say that. They roll back the foot. You did, and so I'm trying to pull say, the red like, flag. You the red flag listen, challenge the play. I know I have. I know I have a. I know I have, a, I know I have a bad. Me. I know I have a bad reputation in this sport because I'm a. I'm a manly man. I like sex. I like sex. If no, sex, I, I only need take sex three times. I only need sex three times a week. That's all I a need. A week. That's all I need. I'm not, is that a sex addict? I mean, no. I would love. I mean, that's, yeah, that's you're a sex addict. That's good numbers, though. You want three different girls three times. No, I just no. <laughs> what do you want? It. No, I didn't say that. What did you say? I, I said all, all I need is sex, sex three times a week. Three times a but week. But do they all have to be a different girl? No, they don't have to. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Let me ask you a question and be honest with me and your brother over here. Ready? Here we go. You would rather have three different types of main courses when you go get sushi, right? You'd rather have I don't tuna, eat sushi. Avoc- you don't eat sushi. No. Bad okay. analogy. Okay, you would rather eat wagyu. And then a little bit of appetizer and then a little bit of salad. You'd rather have choices, right? When we go to Nobu, you don't order one of everything on the menu? Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I eat the same thing over and over. I'm a picky eater. Nah, man, maybe really now because you're going to die. So the let point me that I'm trying to make is you'd rather have three different girls you do know I than one. He knows what I'm saying. I'm trying to be polite. <laughs> Thanks, coach. I was trying not to put you on blast, but you'd rather have three different girls than the same girl, right? So how you doing? See, how did saying? you become? I'm the, a good coach. Uh, yeah, how you become a really good coach? <laughs> I, I was on the Ultimate Fighter, and I was a shit coach. I have no patience. How do you get the patience? <laughs> hey, honestly, Sex wait, addict. Just so you know something? Because you're in Vegas, I looked up the stats. One of the most viewed Ultimate Fighter seasons of all time was his uh, oh, Ultimate, Ultimate Fighter season. Oh, oh, yeah. holes through doors. The most viewed. Oh, don't say that. Oh, uh, with don't Rashad that. Evans. Don't oh, say yeah. that. He don't like that. That's his. That, he hates. Hey, that. bro, but that. Hey, listen. Sometimes, like, I've I've lost my shit on my mat. Where's that extreme control? Man, there's been times where I've lo- I've gone. I've lost my shit on not being prepared, mm. not having things. Guys walking on the mats late. Lost my shit, and it was a temper tantrum. I, I had no no fucking qualms admitting that. Like I look back on I mean, that was kind of a dumbass bitch move on my part. But guess what, motherfuckers were like. Yeah. You know, coach is mad today. Throwing shit, throwing water bottles. I'm like, you guys fucking run practice then. You want to yeah. show up late. All you got to do is put like a little uh, cheap ass door up and yeah. just bust through it every goddamn you time. You fucking smash that door. Regardless of the door, you have one of the most viewed uh, seasons of all time, which I think is awesome. No, oh, thank you. Yeah. So, but but uh, that's still not going to make me even nowhere near the, as good as a coach as well, he I'm is. I'm not saying you're a good coach. I uh, oh, don't get yeah, me wrong. Can you hold that? Uh, no. All right, let's move on. So, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But okay. in terms of in terms of like being a good coach, have you ever fought Randy in the gym? Uh, so when Randy fought, it was Brandon Vera, Mark Coleman. Um, there was a couple camps. I think it might have been Machida. Uh, I got to be a training partner. I got to be a fly on the wall. So I was basically a body for Randy. And I just ended up camp with like a big old rug burn on the top of my forehead from him just dragging my fucking you, head across the mat. So you saying you won the Randy's mm, bodies? Bodies, baby. You won his Pals, bodies? Pals. How, how many bodies does Randy have? Randy, Randy's collected a lot Are of bodies over cool? his time. <laughs> yeah, we, we cool now because of Chris Angel. Uh, yeah, had, had, yeah you, Chris you, is the man. You had some beef with him? Oh, for years. You tried to fight him? I would have fought him. I would have fought him. I was, re- I was really him. upset with Randy Couture for years. Really? He fought him like seven years. Why? But, but it's, it's old. It's old news. Old now. shit. Okay, so it's we're good. We can shit. move on from that. We can move on from uh, that. You can't be beating up old men like that now. I, no. Hey, He's hey uh, six months ago, you would have said, I would, I would have said, fuck Randy Couture. I six be, months ago? This shit just got cleared up oh, recently. Oh, really? man. This shit just got cleared up recently. Like in Saudi? Before South, no, oh, okay. no, no, this happened. This happened because he Chris said he Angel. wanted to come on the pod. You guys are good, right? We cool now. He almost fought uh, Shannon when he saw Shannon. Now we talk. Yeah, we yeah, talk yeah. to each other in Saudi and there. Randy and I, we're cool. Right, thanks yeah. to thanks to Chris Angel. No yeah, way. No, really? I actually Randy? talked to Chris yeah, this Chris, weekend. Chris is a G, bro. Yeah, I like Chris, Chris a lot. Yeah, yeah we, I, lo- Chris I used is to good love dude, watching. Man. We should have him on the show one 100%. day because yeah. you know I go over there and I do his show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he actually hit me up about going on his show. You should. You should. You should. And I want, but. Why are you trying to change the subject when I ask you what about Randy Couture's body count? Yeah, I ain't fucking with that. I ain't fucking with that. <laughs> That's his man. But he, he, he's, he was a body for Randy Couture. Hey, you know what was crazy was when, um, <laughs> when, when Randy beat Gabe Gonzaga. Gabe one. came and trained with us after he beat him. What? And then I was like rolling with Gabe one day, and Gabe was just murdering everybody in the fucking room, right? And I, that was when I realized how good Randy was. 
I was like, yo, because Randy comes in there, high crotches and puts him on his Oh, let's not to forget Gabe Gonzaga. It was huge. Head kicks fucking Mirko Crow Cop. Broke his leg. Broke his goddamn leg in half. Randy comes out and then he kicks Randy and breaks his Randy's arm. I think in the first round, broke his fucking arm. Randy goes out, high crotches him, takes him down, beats him up, ends up finishing him, right? TKO or something round three or four. With a broken arm. Bro- broken yeah. fucking arm. And then Gabe comes out, trains with us after. And I remember looking at Dennis and I was like, yo, fucking how good is Randy, bro? Because Gabe Gonzaga is a goddamn world oh, yeah. beater. He was, he was giant, wasn't he? Giant, bro. Randy what happened to him? I mean, I, I don't know, to be honest with you, man. Like, I think that, like, he just maybe over exceeded expectations when he knocked out Mirko the way that he did. I don't know, but that shit, no one, that, that was on Fox, remember? Yeah, yeah. They were trying to push that on mainstream, yeah. fucking MMA on mainstream TV. Nah, I hated seeing that, because, you know, Ooh. me and Mirko, boy, me, me and Mirko Krokop, boy. You guys are homies? Yeah, but Mirko, Mirko Krokop, man, him boys. I, I love Mirko Krokop. He's a savage. You guys fight? No, we never fought. See, I'm going to tell you why uh, Mirko liked me. It's weird that he liked me. Yeah. My first time fighting in K1, they was they thought I was going to get slaughtered. All the K1 oh. guys, they thought I was going to get slaughtered. And they they put me and Mirko in the same locker room. And Mirko was in the corner with his teammates playing cards like he always do. And um, I was just laying down on the ground and stuff, just waiting for my fight. You know, I ain't going to fuck. And the Japanese girl, she's hot as fuck, yeah. <laughs> interviewing me. And she come up and she saw me and she's like, uh, the, my chain. She was like, Oh, what is this? She picked up my chain and I saw acting like a dog. I'm like, because I'm a dog. I saw yeah. and I saw humping her and like just like, oh my god, like a, I act like a dog and stuff, like shaking my tail, acting like a dog. So I'm humping her and Mirko Crow Cop fell out laughing. laughing you see, his you ass can, off. If you see the, if you pull up that video, you see him in the background laughing. Oh, he was funny. dying laughing because I was like humping her like a, and she was letting me and she fell down. I just, I just stayed like a dog, started licking on her. Ah. <laughs> in Japan, it was like this fuck, fucking like fifteen years ago. Like nobody gave a fuck. Yeah. It wasn't it Me Too movement. Uh, it's like entertainment, shit. right? You yeah. can do whatever the fuck you want to do. Yeah, bro, she was hot. She was a ten. They loved you out there. Oh, too, they loved man. me. You and, tried to take her on a date. Hell yeah. It worked. They loved you out there, bro. She was like, she was like, you got to lick me like you was trying. I'm like, nah, I don't be <laughs> doing all that. I don't be, I'd be joking around, but I don't really be using this tongue, ladies. I don't be. I'm, there's nothing <laughs> like the, the Japan days, though, huh? Oh, I oh, thought man. you were about to say, there's nothing like your tongue. You got me. <laughs> <laughs> yo, like, you guys, hey, yo, you, guys you guys been doing this yeah, too, I, far I, too I, long. I, bro. Yeah, you guys I, been, I was like, yo, where are you going? Woo, with this? Bro. Yeah, yo, I, know. I gotta, I gotta ask you, were you a part of Al Jermaine's uh, camp when he lost to Shirshan? I wasn't. No, um, I did the first two Piotr Jan fights and I did the TJ Dillashaw fight with him yeah and this is out of no reason of like oh we had a falling out yeah, nothing yeah, like that yeah. um when he had the Cejudo fight bro I was so goddamn fucking busy and then when he had the Sugar Sean fight I came in and watched him um I watched him twice I went, went and watched him spar he's my boy man I yeah. love Aljo bro we're, we're, we're super tight we're super close but I didn't I didn't coach him at all for the for those last two fights what do you think about uh Pierre going into his next fight Alex you know um I think it's a stat uh, a clash of styles in the regards of who can drag one of the other into their style of fight where I think paid is a very good, clean, polished, accomplished striker, very precise. Whereas uh Yuri is very unorthodox and erratic and crazy in his striking. I think if one guy can draw them into that style of fight, the one that can get yeah. them to do that will succeed because if you can get Alex Pajeda out of his comfort zone and make it an erratic, crazy, weird fucking style of fighting, then you can get him into your element of your game, you know? But I think Alex Pajeda is smart. I think he's a very smart striker. I don't think he's going to fall into that, in that trap. And and you think Yuri hits harder than Alex? I wouldn't say one hits harder than the other. Um, I think just brought, you know, the right placement. And I think if you're talking about accuracy, it's going to be Alex Bejeda. He's the more accurate sniper, if you will. Whereas Yuri's going to throw things. And we always say this too, is like, keep your defense up three seconds longer than you think, right? Because it's, he throws something, guess what? Back fist comes behind it or something crazy comes behind it. So keep your mind, your P's and Q's. But Yuri does things um, where he'll throw and leave his hands behind. Left hook, hands in his pocket. Right hook, hands in his pocket. So I think that Alex will be able to see where the holes are on the openings in the defense, and he'll look to exploit that. I love it. I can tell just by the way he talked, man. He's a fucking I I love listening to – he is one of the most intellectual – minds and fighting and, and before we wrap this up i just want to say how honored i am for you to come sit here with us i know i nah, always say it every my time pleasure, man. having rampage here and 
all these guys leave comments and we're doing this. Like I, I got to say it every time because we really are doing this for the MMA community. Yeah. Man. And having you on here now, having you as like one of our official coaches of Bro, Jackson. Your family, man. You're, you know? You've always been a brother to me, you know, and it's been an honor, man, sitting sitting able to chop it up with Rampage. Like, yeah. dream come true, bro. Like, you know, I ain't going to try to date him on age. I heard Buchecha attack and he's old and shit, but, you know. <laughs> um, but he's been, he's always been one of the guys I think that has paved the way for MMA. Um to be able to watch a guy who compete the way that he did, the way that he brought the sport up, man, it's an honor to be able to sit across from you and chop yeah, it up with you, bro. 100%. 100%. And, and, and honestly, like we say this every podcast, but I want to make sure we always let the fans know, like, you know, Jackson as a brand, number yep. one men's jewelry brand, we're not doing this to, to, for any other reason. We don't make money from this. We don't run ads on this. We just are doing this to make fun content, bring people together, give our community something to stay involved. That's why Rampage was one of our first, you know, MMA athletes, world champions, yep. bringing in coaches like this so we could support you guys, so you could support fighters. And, you know, at the end of the day, we sell chains and we sell jewelry to build people's confidence and you guys build people's confidence to become world champions. It's the perfect mix. I think we're doing something no other jewelry brand is doing. And that's why I'm excited for this because it really gives us the opportunity to have the brand speak to people and then hopefully the fans are appreciating all 100%. this we're doing it for them. And, bro, real talk, I've been, I've been rocking you guys organically for years. You know what I mean? Right I mean, I've been rocking you organically. There's nothing like, yeah. hey, bro, can you do this? Nah. Never. I like the brand. anything yeah. and he just supports and that's why i was so excited when i told you i'm gonna get to the point where i can get you involved and we're yep. gonna build a new jackson house we're gonna build a gym he's been here in my dream for years two three years now and then he's, he stayed riding bro with he jumped yeah. as soon as he got this place he told me because you had the little warehouse yeah. before you were my first guy to come visit me there yeah, yeah. yeah. and then he told me i'm doing this i'm doing this and then once by the time he did it, it was fast. Bro. Yeah, you know, yeah. he brought me and Ige over, I think, in April. We did the pot at the house. And yeah. Then, you know, he showed me everything that he was doing. We were staying over at Pat's house when uh, with Ruka. Yeah. And bro, like just I just love I love, man, you get behind a brand, it's it's family. You know what I mean? Like oh, you, you wanna you wanna be you wanna be involved with something that you actually get behind, you know. You just yeah. don't wanna be throwing the shit on you don't me believe too. it. So me yeah. too, bro. Oh, that's right. We both lost yeah. look at this was this was he was the first week I, I jumped on board. Uh, Cause my partner Josh had started this, yeah. and then they brought me on in 2020. That's what yeah, I mean. bro, bro, that's a bear I know right there. Yeah, but look, but he don't look. But you carried the weight. You carried the weight good though. Look, it's fucking the, run the jewels, yeah, killer Mike and LP. Oh. Bro, we, hey, like we a, were we were menaces. Yeah, yeah I look like a, I look like a pit bull. <laughs> yeah, you look mad as fuck. Yeah, but I'm I mean, a, I was always mad. I got to take a picture when I'm fat. <laughs> you always just. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, coach, I was like three, I, I was like uh, 227 right now. I'm 190. I was almost 300 pounds. But I got to get down to 170 if I want to make that fight in Jalisco. So. I'm cornering you, bro. Yeah. You let me know. Yeah, that, yeah. I'm going to have out. all of you guys in my corner. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. He, need, he, need to have, he need to have like at least one fight. One fight. Yeah, I'm coming out and cornering you, bro. So before, before we wrap up, I definitely want to say two things to the fans. Mm. Um, when this episode comes out, you know, we hit 45,000 subscribers Fuck today. Fuck yeah, congrats, bro. This is bro. one of the fastest growing MMA podcasts and it wouldn't be possible without all these guys you know, they leave comments every Thursday we go live. And when we drop an episode, people watch live with us. And we I started this discord so we could start flying people in. Uh, we have one of the biggest sales of the year right now. It's up to 50% off site wide. And all the jewelry we sell is real gold made in Italy. And like, like I said, like, I don't go anywhere without this. He's always wearing two or three. You always have a, a chain on when you win. Always, and the minute bro. he takes his victory photo, it comes out his shirt. So like, yeah, no, I always I'm, rock it, know? bro. I'm always rocking rock something. I'm always yeah. rocking something. I always I'm rock it. I'm just okay. excited I'm that, that people are appreciating the jewelry and that you guys see the vision and the brand and the fans do because we get so much positive response. And obvi honestly, it's because of Rampage's, you know, legacy and, and heritage and the fans really rally behind them. But me as a brand owner, you know, I'm just bare to GDO, the Jackson guy. And to see the positive response from the MMA community, that's what we're doing this for. And to have you, a legend in the MMA right now, Thank you, potentially going to go down as probably the greatest MMA trainer oh, of all man. time. I got, I got a lot of work to do, but I appreciate that, A lot of work, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, we all know what's going to happen. I just want to say thank you, so... And, uh, and that's yeah. all I got. Yeah, thank you uh, for sitting with us. Um, bro, honor's all mine, man. Thank you guys for having me out. All appreciate right. you. All right, guys, it's been another dope podcast with Bear and I, and we had a great, great guest. I learned a lot from him. And he, he's the motherfucking man. Eric niggas is sick. <laughs> this nigga sick. Eric sick nigga. What's your, how you hey, say it? That's how I like it. It's good. How you say it's it? It's got a good ring to it. Sick, sick Nick. Nick sick. Eric sick Nick. <laughs> this nigga sick. <laughs>